Hi, ho guys and gals. I know it might be hard to believe, but summer is coming up fast. Now, as the season changes and it starts to get warmer, for some of you down south, it may already be there. But uh, I know for me that I start thinking about like spending time up in the mountains, going fly fishing, spending time in the cold water with the cubs and having a great time. But the fact of the matter is, it also means it's going to get hot. And that might, might be hot inside your house. It could be just, just miserable hot in your shop. So we're going to help you find a way to stay cool this summer. We're going to talk about some air conditioning kind of solutions. Now, the first thing you need to talk about is how many BTUs do you need? That's British thermal units as opposed to the Irish thermal units, which are usually measured in whiskey. Uh, anyway, <laughs> the point is, so there's, there's a rough calculation going that goes based off of square footage. And you go like... The this one says 10 to 250, 250, 350. Anyway, that's one way to doing it. But I'll be honest, it's not the most accurate because it doesn't take into a lot of the real considerations. Hot air rises, cold air stays lower. So if you have higher ceilings and stuff, that's going to be issued. Do you have stuff in your space that's going to make it hotter, which is why I prefer to use something like this. This is a BTU calculator, and I'll put a link to this down below. There will also be links to all sorts of other stuff down there. Anyway, like say if we look at this first one here, or let's take the midsize one. 200 to 350 square feet. Well, let's take a mid-size, let's, right in the middle, we'll split the difference, we'll call it 300 square feet. But let's say your ceiling height, let's say like we're talking about my shop. My shop has 15 foot ceilings, all right? So uh, technically it gets got eight, 10 foot ceilings, but they're, they're rafters and then it can go up higher. So 15 foot ceilings. Uh, sun exposure, is it heavily shaded? Is it average? Is it very sunny? Well, there's nothing blocking the sun around my shop, so it's very sunny. All right, am I in a cold climate? Well, let's just say I'm in a hot climate. Let's say I'm, I'm down in the Vegas area, like we spend some of our time. Does it include a kitchen? Well, it doesn't have a kitchen, but you know what it's got? It's got welders. It's got all sorts of other stuff that produce heat. So we're going to say, yeah, it kind of does have something that produces heat in that area. Well, in that case, this is the first calculator or the first plan here is telling me I need a 7,000 to 8,500 BTU, which seems reasonable. But at this one, they're telling me I need 17,000 BTU because you need to take in consideration a worst case scenario. You're running that thing that makes it hot. It's a terrible still day with no kind of breeze helping you out. And it's in the dog days of summer and it's 105 outside. Is your, is your 7,000 BTU going to keep up in that room? No, in that standard like living room kind of situation that's only 3,000 3, or bedroom, sure, it might handle that. But you anyway, use the calculator is what I'm saying. Now, if you're like, well, how do I figure out, what, you know, exactly I've got an odd-shaped shop or something like that or my my house is oddly shaped, i got a great little tool here, and you may not, you, you all have it, you just don't realize it. That is Google Maps. Now, this is a house I used to live in in Vegas, and what you do is you go to your house, here there's the outline of the house go to one of the corners and you right click on it make sure you right click not left click and you go down to measure distance and click measure distance now i go to the opposite corner and i click on that then i go to another corner and another corner and you can just guess me it's a rough estimate another corner you come back and make sure the little circle pops up so you know you're going to close the loop here boom and now down here it tells me the total area is 1500 Oh, sorry, 1,576.66 square feet. Pretty handy, huh? And you can guesstimate and stuff like, let's say I wanted to measure the upstairs, which this is one quarter of it is, is uh, what you call it, is uh, a lofted room. So there's no, uh, there's no, there's no area, no floor plan there. So we just go back again to measure distance and I go again to that corner and I come down to this corner and then I just estimate it goes to about here to here over to there and up to there something like that and it gives me 1115 that could add the two together and get the total square footage approximate of, of that two-story house so there's ways around it anyway it's just a fun free tool for you to use uh especially you know what if you do like you know uh pressure cleaning stuff you want to estimate someone's driveway you could uh, do the same thing you could come over here you could go measure distance and you could come there and there and there work your way around come over to here look at this this is a fun tool to play with Anyway, I know I'm getting off topic here. There you go, 433 square feet. Anyway, moving on. So once you figure it out exactly how much space you have and how many BTUs you need, then you got to think about what kind of style uh, of AC unit there is. Now, there, of course, is the standard central air, and we're not going to talk about that here because that's used for whole house kind of heating or cooling, uh, and uh, it's a bigger discussion 
than we can really have in this video. We're really talking about here solutions for single rooms, single zone kind of uh, air conditioning, whether it's your shop or a two car garage or a shed or your bedroom or something like that. We're gonna help you out with that. And the four different styles that we're gonna talk about are, we're gonna talk about window, which is the most common. Then we're gonna talk about the portable ones, which have really become popular in the past few years. We're gonna talk about mini splits, which are definitely the most efficient, but also the most expensive. And then we're gonna talk about something that's not exactly an air conditioner, but it is, does help depending on where you live and the temperature and the humidity outside, and that's evaporative cooling. So first off, let's talk about the old classic air conditioner. I've had these for years. Uh, they're loud, they're noisy. Uh, they use a lot of electricity, but you know what? On a hot day, they have saved me so many times. I can remember, boy, you know, I'm in my mid-50s now. I can remember back early 20s when I got my first AC at my first apartment, and oh, it was the middle of August, and I, I managed to get one on sale. I, could not, I could, wouldn't care how loud that sucker was, just as long as it kept me cool. That said, you gotta understand how these air conditioners work. And all of them work off the same principle. Basically, there's a hot side and there's a cold side. And what the hot side does is it gets, it runs a compressor, which compresses a gas that gets hot and everything else. And there's a, a cooling system over there where it blows wind over like a radiator and stuff. And that takes the hot out. Anyway, it pumps that condensed gas over to the cold side, and as that, that gas expands, it becomes cold. You ever had a can of compressed air, let a bunch of air out all at once, it gets cold? Now you understand. So anyway, that gets cold, goes through a radiator, fan blows over there, blows air through the cold side. So the air on the on the cold side pulls it from the room it's, it's, it's cooling down, pulls it from that room, cools it, and puts it back in the room. On the hot side, it takes the air from outside, blows it past the radiator, and blows it back outside. So the two sides never touch when, as far as the air is concerned. And that's a key component here we're going to talk about here in a little bit. But that's the way these all these uh, AC units work. All right, now let's talk about a good budget choice for a small room air conditioner, okay? As far as window units go. We're looking at here is a 6,000 BTU, multi-speed fan, programmable timer, Energy Star certified. This is your basic no frills window air conditioner unit. But you know what? It's got a real history of just being a rock solid, you know, cold air producer. It'll just run and run and run. Should last you years and years. And at $220, for good for good good cold air that is not a lot of money it doesn't have any the bells and whistles of frills some of the other ones are going to have but if all you need is cold air you're on a budget and it's a small room this could be the way to go next up we're going to talk about the lg this is an 8000 btu so we're stepping up to a bigger room here this is a dual inverter smart window air conditioner now this one is the exact opposite of the last one it's got all the latest tech into it now if you've been watching the channel you know we talk about having inverters in our generators well this kind of does the same thing actually really does do the same thing. It makes sure that the, the, the electricity coming in is regulated based on the use case. So if the, the, uh, if the AC is working hard, it's gonna let it work hard. But if it doesn't need to, it's going to reduce its capacity, or it's not its capacity, but it, it, the volume of electricity that it takes. Now, how this works is it also affects the compressor side, not just the fan side. Like, there's I'm sure you can change the speed on the fan on the other ones, but this handles it all automatically, or I should say, automatically in this case. And what it does is, if it's not too, if it's not that hot out, you just need a little bit of air. You're not going to pay the same kind of money because on the other ones, it's kind of binary. It's either on or off and with the inverter it allows you to have all those middle spots in between so you're only paying for what you really need 376 dollars you're jumping up 2000 btu but you're getting that inverter tech that's going to save you the money in the long term over a course of a year it's going to pay for itself it really will and on top of that you get not just the remote with it but you get smart features so you can use it with your uh, with your cell phone with an app you can control anywhere you like if you're into that sort of thing i'll be honest i am uh because my next one if you want a bigger room our next choice here for 10,000 btu is the medea now, if you've been around the channel, you've heard me talk about this thing a lot. It's got a cult following at this point. And yes, I have joined the cult, but I'll be honest, it, it, it does everything it claims it's going to do. Not only is this an inverter AC unit, but it is almost a mini split in your uh, in your window. And what a mini split is, we're going to talk about mini split systems in the in, down the road here. But mini splits, what they do is they take the cooling side, they put it outside completely, and then you have a head unit inside that all it does is handle the cold air production. 
and that takes the noisy part, which is the compressor part, puts it outside. The hot part, the cold, the noisy part, all the bad part you don't want in your AC unit is outside, and the whisper quiet part is inside. Well, this is a mini split in your window. Your, your window literally comes down into the slot here. See that? They call it a U-shaped system there literally comes down into there and closes this allows a lot more light to come in you don't feel like your windows blocked as much now in my house we have i, I kid you my house is 140 years old it's one of the old, oldest houses in montana and it's got a foot and a half thick quarried stone uh, for the walls so going through the wall is is not something i really want to do so putting in a mini split or something like that just wasn't something we wanted to do with it but this basically gave us the choice right in our window and it's not a big big house but we can pretty much keep the entire house except for the kitchen cool with this and it's fantastic the kitchen we have great pass-through air it's not really a problem that said uh, it has all the smart features. It has the uh, the inverter. It's got everything else. I know I'm kind of rambling about it, but I'm, I'm we're that happy with his unit. Uh, the thing we upgraded from before was so loud and so noisy. I couldn't hear the TV in the living room. I had a choice of either being hot and, and, and insufferable or <laughs> and be able to listen to my TV or being cold and comfortable but no television. Now it's, people can talk. It's fantastic. Anyway, let's say you've got a bigger room and you're like, this is 10,000 BTU won't work. I'm going to need to really step up. Well, guess what? They make one in a 12,000. And yes, that's our choice for the larger unit as well. It's it's a step up. Look, it's 459 for the 12,000 and it's 419. If you think that you might need the 12,000 and you can afford, I mean, it's not a huge, was it? 420 versus 40 dollars more uh for another two i'd get it i i really would because better to have it uh and and on, especially on the, the you know there's going to be that two weeks in the middle of summer where it's going to be miserable and if you're just barely getting enough btus you know it's not going to be enough all right next up let's talk about the droids in the living room that is the portable air conditioning unit we, we call them droids because that's kind of what they look like. This is what we upgraded from. And these things are, have, have well, let's say this. They become extremely popular, and yet they also have some, I won't call them extreme drawbacks, but significant drawbacks, okay? So the way they work is, again, it's the same thing as the last one where there's the hot side and the cold side. The difference is the hot side is now in your room with you, and it's not separated outside. So what it does is it pulls in air from the room and half of that gets used to cool the hot side and then sent through that tube outdoors and the other half gets cooled and gets shot back into the room. Well, you're like, well, how is that a problem? Well, there's at least two big, uh, three issues. Two of them are big issues. So the hot side is in your room. So it's radiating heat. The tube going outside is hot. It's radiating heat. Now, that's not a ton, you know, it, but it's it's not insignificant either. The other factor is that nature abhors a vacuum. If you're pulling air in and then sending it out, are you lowering the pressure in that room? Yeah, yeah, you are. So it's got to replace that air from somewhere. Guess where it's going to get that air from? Outside, where it's hot. So you are pulling hot air from outside, inside, to cool the hot side to send it back outside, which is why the other units are better because they just take the air that's inside, cool it, and put it back into that room. This shares that problem or shares that, that process, but then you have the problem of the hot side. There is a solution to it, and we're going to talk at least to some of it. So the basic one is this, and I can't believe I'm saying this, but Black & Decker probably makes the best bang for the buck a portable style AC unit. If you've got a situation, especially where you don't have like a standard window that you could put a regular window AC unit in, I totally get it. You don't want to do the install or whatever. You just want something quick and fast. It's not as inexpensive as some of them, but the other thing is they are, they're not as small. So you're looking at a 12,000 system here, but it's not really 12,000 because you're losing or say you can't lose cold. You're, you're gaining heat. Uh, so you're getting heat from the radiation from the unit, it's not radiation, but it's radiating heat, uh, coming out of the hose as well and pulling in air from the outside. But you know, it, they, in fact, in Europe, they even came up with a separate rating called an, instead of, uh, just BTU, it's BTU SACC, which stands for, I, it's like adjusted BTU rating, uh, take the, takes into account all the, the, the heat radiating from it and the heat that pulls in from outside. 
Uh, anyway, at twelve thousand, uh, you're looking at four hundred dollars. It's probably really like a, I would say probably like an eight thousand BTU unit to be honest. Uh, once you make those adjustments, but it, it's a it's a good solid unit. I mean, if you look at this forty one thousand ratings, uh, it's got a pretty uh, pretty good uh, you know ratings review. It's got a little slight fish hook on it, not a terrible one, not so much that I would be freaked out. But uh, it doesn't have, an, again, it's like the basic one. You don't have any other extra features. It's got a remote control, which is nice. If you can find the remote, we all know what, what I'm talking about. Um, and, you know, it's not the it's not the loudest thing. It's not the quietest thing, but it's not the loudest thing out there. Definitely not as loud as the old one we were using. Now, I will say this. They do make a smaller one. They do make one that comes in at uh, 8,000 BTU. But it's fifty dollars less, and I'll be honest. Once you you know compensate for the heat and everything, that's taking this thing down to a six thousand BTU unit. And I don't know if I'd recommend it at that level, which is why I put it that. But the link goes to both of them, so you can make the call. What's right for you? Now, if you really want cooling and you got a big room and you want to step up to twelve thousand, well, actually technically ten thousand. This is again, it's Medea. That's the same company that makes the U-shaped one. This is a great unit. This is, again, it's an inverter one, so you're getting that adjustable power level, so it's not going to hit your power bill nearly as hard as a regular AC unit would. Uh, and then uh, it has this feature up top, the hose that goes out, if you notice, that's a dual hose. So it pulls air from outside and then pushes air back outside. So that gets rid of that part where it creates a vacuum and sucks air from the hot air from the outside. This eliminates one of the major concerns with these what it doesn't eliminate is the fact that even though it is it is dual hose it, that the warm hose is still radiating warm air and the unit itself is still rating you know warm air from the hot side so it's still that's why it's got the SACC rating on it that actually says no it's really a 10,000 BTU even though it's got 12,000 BTUs of power $530 though, you're paying for that inverter tech, you're paying for the dual hose feature, and you're, you're paying for a better build quality on that. All right, let's move along and let's talk about mini splits. I, was, I brought them up before, so let's jump into it. Mini splits are fantastic, all right? They, as far as cooling, they have probably no downside. They probably the most fuel or electrical efficient that there is. Uh, they, they're great units. They're basically a smaller compact uh, zone unit uh, of what you'd see for a, uh, a central air unit. They're essentially the same thing. And what you do is you, this is the negative side. You have to, A, you have to have a place to install them outside. That means either pouring a pad or buying a pre-built pad or hanging it on a wall bracket. Honestly, I think the wall bracket is probably the least attractive looking, but probably the most effective. It gets it up off the lawn, allows air to circulate all around it. Uh, when the lawnmower goes by, less stuff's gonna get kicked on it. It's probably better for the unit. That said, you also then have to drill a hole through your wall from the outside inside. Now, for some of us, not a big issue, unless you have foot and a half thick historic river stone you don't wanna drill through anyway. Uh, the, then you have your head unit that's placed on the inside. And usually what happens is the outside unit has three lines, uh, two gas lines, a sending and a receiving line and an electrical line. But some of them I have seen where the electrical is on the inside. Depends on the unit you get. But anyway, these are, the, other than the install, the, they're definitely the way to go, except for, again, also, well, maybe cost. Uh, now, the, if you're looking for a budget unit, I'm going to recommend the Della 12,000 BTU here. And again, because these they're so expensive and they're so big, they uh, you don't really see these in super compact, you know, six thousand BTU units. Uh, this is I won't say it's the most reliable out there, and this is definitely a budget option. But it's probably the best of the budget options. At seven hundred dollars, and it's got thirty five dollar off coupon. You're going to get twelve thousand BTU. You get a smart unit. You get a remote control. You get everything you need for the install, except for the pad and the tools to do it with. And if you're capable or you got a friend who is, I'm sure you can call somebody up and have them come over and help. This is a fantastic way to go. On top of that, it doesn't take up a window space. It doesn't take up any floor space. It goes up, usually high up on your wall because cold air goes down, right? And I'll tell you what, I got several friends who have these mini split units in their houses. And uh, because they're all older houses that have been retrofitted. And these things are super quiet. In fact, uh, one of my friends... Uh, she puts a piece of paper, uh, she's taped it so she can look over and verify, make sure that that thing's blowing because 
She gets hot so easily. She desperately wants to make sure the cold air is blowing. Uh, now, if you're willing to spend a few bucks more, we've got the Sinville. Sin, I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, the Lido Series Mini Split. This is an 8,000 BTU unit. Now, at this point, now one thing I didn't mention in the previous unit, it'll run on 110, 120, okay? This one, you're going to need 220 or 244, it, all right? Uh, so you might have to have an electrician, electrician, uh, electrician come out and install uh, an outlet for you. Uh, it's going to be the same install otherwise. And it's going to cost a few bucks more. You're looking at $1,035. But there's a $100 off coupon taking this down to sub $1,000. Considering that it is, A, again, a smart unit. And B, one of the most reliable units on the market. I don't see how, like, if you if you can afford it and you're looking for something in this size range... This is, this is a no-brainer. This is the one to go with. Uh, in fact, if you need something bigger, you're looking at $24,000. i am going to recommend Senville again. Uh, I've done a lot of research in this, talked to a lot of the HVAC guys out there who do installs on stuff like this. And I would say uh, I've, about everyone I talk to, uh, they, they'd give me a list of them, and this name always came up. There's someone who would say, well, this one, there's also this one. But all of them seem to have Senville on their list. $1,700, you're looking at this one, 2,400 BTU. Just a bigger version of the last one. Again, it's got the smart features as well, as well as having the remote that you will quickly lose. Uh, it just I've got kids. My family remotes just disappear. I have to I have to threaten them with physical death for the TV remote. Luckily for the AC, uh, I have no idea where the AC remote is, but I have it hooked up to my phone, and I have it hooked up to she who shall not be named, so I can just say, hey, you, set the temperature to 70. And it does it. It's fantastic. In fact, when I'm when we've been out for a day, and uh, the AC is you know we use the smart control system so it knows no one's home and it lowers the 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 uh, the usage. I can get on my phone and be like, oh, okay, we're gonna be home about half an hour. Let's crank it up so it's nice and frosty by the time we walk in the door. All right, let's talk about the fourth option. That is the evaporative cooling, or as how I grew up calling them, swamp coolers. All right. So what a swamp cooler does is it basically is, I'm, let me let me jump ahead. I'm going to show you the solution that I lived with for years. Uh, now, lots of people you've seen on the internet making stuff like this. They'll they'll take a bucket and a fan and they'll make this kind of thing. This is this is what I had for years well, before I could afford to buy an AC unit I'm living on my own in uh, in uh, Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky and getting the hot summer. We'd get out the towel rack, soak it in some water, put a fan on it. Oh, it felt so good. Felt so good. And then it would dry out and you have to go soak the towel again. Uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, the point is this, that they they have some sort of media that either sucks the water up, or some of them, they'll, they'll have a pump system, they'll pump the water up and drip it. Some of them just have the reservoir at the top and just let it drip down over the media. And uh, it blows air through that, and the, uh, you know, the state change of the water into a vapor, uh, you know, cools the air down and that's you know blows it across and it feels like cooler air almost like ac they're a lot cheaper but they don't work in certain conditions and also they add a high degree of moisture to the environment now if you're in a really dry area that might be a benefit to you but you know rust if you're looking at a shop rust is a consideration in your house mold is a consideration so just take that into into account as far as what i said before about temperature and humidity that's the thing. If you live in a high humid area, they don't work as well. Uh, if you're, uh, in fact, there's even, a, I'll, I'll put a link to this chart so you can look at the chart. But there's also this map here that's like basically if you're in the A area, which I am, uh, you're in an ideal area. Uh, the, the humidity is, is low enough that it's not really a problem. Uh, B, it says, is marginal. How they can look at southern Arizona and call that marginal? I don't know. Maybe it's been a while since I've been to southern Arizona, but that seems hella hot down there. I think it would work great. But anyway, what do I know? Uh, what I find very interesting, though, is that big swath right down the middle of the country where it's kind of halfway between uh, arid region and, and a very humid region because that kind of lines up with the underpopulated belt, which if you haven't heard about this is... This belt of area in the U.S. that is the least densely populated. Uh, I find it interesting. You'd think that that would be the great area to live in. You know, it's not too humid. It's not too dry. It's just right. Apparently not. Apparently nobody wants to live there. Um, anyway, that said, uh, I think I showed you all the rest of the stuff there. Let's talk about the units themselves. Here's a budget unit for you here. This is never even heard of this brand. 
Tammy Key, I read through some of the ratings. I looked at some stuff online. It seems okay for the money, 100 bucks. It is essentially the same thing. Uh, it's just an automated version of that. That of uh, <laughs> where to have it. It's an it's an automated version of, of this right here. Uh, that that's that's all it is. It it soaks some water up. It it blows air through it and bobs your uncle. It's got three, four modes, three speeds, personal swamp cooler with humidifier. What do you mean with humidifier? It is a humidifier. Anyway, hundred bucks. It's an option, right? All right. If you want something a little more sturdy, a little more reliable, we've got this one here. This is a couple of people sell this unit actually, uh, but these guys have the best price on it and decent ratings. Mepti here. Uh, 1800 CFM cubic feet per minute. That's how much air the fan is moving. Uh, it does basically the same thing. Uh, you can even look at this. It, I like this though. It's got these water packs there that you can refrigerate it to get the water even colder. Uh, but then it, it does basically the same thing. It's got some four different directional vents. Not that, I, I mean, I, are you really going to take, I'm going to take one vent and move it over here. One, maybe you are, maybe you are. But for me, I'd be like, you know, I want all to just dump into this one area. Um, I even talk about where it's ideal for use. The, I don't know anybody who's keeping it under the kitchen counter. Maybe you are, I don't know, but it's a nice, it's not too big. It's not too small. Has a remote $170 with a $30 off coupon. And last on our list, if you want something big, same company, just a bigger version, more, more robust, uh, three speed mode, 10 gallon tank, uh, industrial strength, swamp cooler, 320 bucks with a $20 off coupon. There you go. If you've got a better option or something you think that I missed, put it down in the links down below. While you're down there, don't forget to chomp the old like button, smash the subscribe and ring the bell on your way out. You all take care. God bless. And as always, shine on.